I have a lot of notebooks and notepads, generally a lot of paper around me. And if you've been watching my channel, you know that I love pen and paper. Out of all these notebooks, there are five that I frequently use, and today we're going to take a look at them. A quick preface before we get started. Chances are, if you're watching this channel, you're already inclined towards analog tools, in particular stationery and perhaps pen and paper or pen on paper. In this modern age of digital formats and digital media and digital abilities to take notes and write things down, I find gravitating towards notebooks, pen and paper or pen on paper in particular, more helpful for me. And there's a couple of reasons for that. Number one, I think notebooks and pens and paper are just cool. And chances are, again, if you are watching this channel, you're probably inclined that way. Number two, on a more practical level, there's this thing with digital note taking that doesn't quite work for me. I can write things down and I can type pretty fast and I can write down a whole bunch of things. But for some reason in my brain, it just doesn't quite register. Even when I reread some of my notes, I'll get some of the intent, but not the full picture. I find when I'm writing pen on paper and taking notes and writing things down and writing in general for fun, for practical purposes, it just seems to register in my brain differently. And for some reason, I can remember what I wrote down a lot better. And when I reread my notes, which is always fun, it seems to click. The last reason, well, I just really enjoy the tactile sensation of pen on paper. I've tried to mimic it with mechanical keyboards and things like that in in the digital media, and I love typewriters as well. But for some reason, pen on paper just does it for me. Another quick aside, before I show you my five frequently used notebooks, the best notebook is probably the one that you have on you or within reach. Ultimately, while there are aesthetics involved and there are considerations on fancy types of paper and beautiful letterheads and beautiful pens, in my opinion, the best notebook is one within reach or one you have around you. If you're inclined towards analog tools, use what you got. What I'm about to show you are my curated notebooks, which have taken me years to kind of hone into what works for me today, and I'm sure this will all change as the years go on. There are two main considerations when it comes to my frequently used notebooks. Number one, price. It has to be cheap. The reason they're frequently used notebooks for me is I go through them very fast and they're used a lot. So it has to be replenished at a fairly decent price point for my budget. What I'm about to show you are notebooks that fit within my budget. I'll say this again, the best notebook is one that fits within your ability to acquire. These notebooks are what I'm willing to pay for. The second consideration for my frequently used notebook is mobility. My notebooks have to be in a small form factor and they have to have the ability to be carried around with me in everyday carry situations. Most of the notebooks that I'm gonna show you here fall into that with perhaps one exception where the weight is a little bit heavier than what I would typically carry every single day. My first frequently used notebook is my Traveler's Company Traveler's Notebook. If you've been watching my channel, you know I love this notebook. In fact, I've got an entire series of videos dedicated to just these notebooks, and I think they're fantastic. Here's a link to the Traveler's Notebook series that I'm talking about. Now, I just said that two key considerations for frequently used notebooks are price and mobility. This certainly fits into the mobility aspect. It's a small form factor, but you might be staring at me and wondering if I'm being hypocritical here by stating that the Traveler's Company Traveler's Notebook is a budget-friendly option. Hear me out for a second. Yes, these guys from Traveler's Company run 55 US dollars, I believe, at the time of this video, and roughly 76 to 80 Canadian dollars at the time of this video. That's not cheap as a start, there are certainly cheaper options out there, I fully admit that. However, I invested in this Traveler's Company system a long time ago. And aside from the cover, the inserts and the refills, the notebooks themselves are refillable. And that's where the beauty of this comes in. The notebooks themselves are relatively cheap. 
you can spend as much or as little as you want on the refills themselves. The other thing I should mention is the Traveler's Company Traveler's Notebook certainly has a price tag attached to it, but there are many alternative options out there available and certainly cheaper ones out there as well. In fact, I even had a few commenters talk about how they've created their own Traveler's Notebook out of leather. You don't need to spend as much money on the cover for the Traveler's Notebook. I'm invested, this is what I like, and I love them. In the past, I've shared how there are a few different inserts that I like in my Traveler's Notebook. The two inserts that I use frequently are the Weekly Memo, and I've already talked about this. If you're interested in finding out more details, click here. And the other one is a blank, and the other insert is a blank insert or a dot grid. Right now I have a blank in this. The Weekly Memo, you can get a blank version from the Traveler's Company at roughly 10 US dollars to 15 Canadian dollars. And the dot grid or blank version inserts come in at six US dollars or six Canadian dollars, give or take. And that's why I love them. I go through the blank notebook and the dot grid fairly fast. And the weekly memo, well, it's a planner. This one in particular is a themed version. You do pay a little bit more from the Traveler's Company for that. It's printed and pre-populated to a certain extent in terms of the year ahead just like any other planner or agenda system out there. The blank insert here is my catch-all. What I mean by that is this insert acts as a few different functions for me. Typically, I tend to use it as a gratitude journal. I also use it as a brainstorming journal, writing down ideas, jotting down a few things, kind of a high-level overview for some of my ideas. And sometimes I'll just write down things that I need to remember. Really, the blank or the dot grid notebook here is for capturing anything and everything. A bit of a cheat on my first frequently used notebook here by the fact that while it is called a traveler's notebook, there are a couple of different notebooks inside of it. My second frequently used notebook here is again a bit of a cheat and it's a bit of a mouthful, so stick with me. This is the traveler's company inserts or notebooks or refills inside a Galen Leather traveler's notebook passport insert or wallet. I've done a video on this beautiful leather insert that theoretically would stick inside or be inserted inside a another cover, a Traveler's Company passport version of the Traveler's Notebook or a Galen Leather Traveler's Notebook passport size or any passport size out there. Now in that video I talked about how this insert being inserted into another cover felt really bulky and it was a bit too hefty or wieldy to carry around. As a few commenters pointed out and, and as I eventually decided to, I got rid of the cover. I really liked the cover, there was a lot of personal attachment to it uh, for aesthetic reasons, but it just seemed like it was just too much to stick into my pocket. This guy sticks into my pocket. Still a little bit big, I won't lie, and it does look like there's quite an outline in in my pocket and in my pants there, but I love it. I absolutely love this because it serves a few different uses. Obviously it holds my pen, it acts as a wallet, but more importantly, it keeps my notebooks inside of this. There are two inserts that I constantly use in here. The first one is a monthly overview. Similar to the regular size version of the Traveler's Notebook, this is from the Traveler's Company, both of these inserts. You can get pre-populated versions, which you tend to pay a little bit more. They are themed and they come with stickers and they're printed out. But you can get blank versions again for relatively cheap. The blank version of this running for about 10 Canadian dollars and roughly about 9 US dollars. Allows me to just, as I'm walking around, Talking to people, this one's on my pocket, as opposed to the regular version of the Traveler's Notebook, which might be in my bag. This one is on me at all times, other than when I'm at home. And if I'm trying to remember a few dates or I'm planning out look-aheads, then I'll do that in the monthly here. The second insert or notebook that I put in here is a dot grid. And similar to the second notebook in my regular size Traveler's Notebook, this is intended to be just a catch-all for things I need to remember, things I want to write down, grocery lists, whatever it might be, I write it down in here. The passport version, compared to the regular version, the passport sits in my pocket, and so it's always on me when I'm out and about, and I always have a pen and a paper accessible 
right on me, which is why I love it so much. Now, just a quick note on the Galen leather insert here. It has taken a little bit of beating. So I bought this a few months ago, and the zipper in particular has started fraying in a couple of different spots here. In fact, the zipper came right off, and I ended up just gluing the ends together a little bit just because I lost the end cap piece. It still works, and it works great. My third frequently used notebook is the Midori MD A5 notebook. I love this guy. In fact, I did a video called The Notebook to Beat All Notebooks. I find it's a perfect balance between great fountain pen friendly paper and price. I use this notebook primarily for journaling and it sits inside my Galen Leather A5 portfolio. I love it because it's so versatile. It, it seems to tick off all the boxes, and yes, I have experimented with fancier fancier paper, which you do tend to pay a little bit more, but at the price point of 14 Canadian dollars, it just works for me because I go through so many of these so fast. Other than fountain pens, I've done watercolors in this, I've done colored pencils, I've done felts, you name it, this notebook can take it all, and that is why it is a frequently used notebook. I also love the A5 size in particular because it's nice and portable. And well, yes, while I do carry it around in my Galen Leather A5 portfolio, I can also just toss this in one of my bags and it's there. Perhaps the only downside is the because the price point being so attractive and low, it doesn't have a hard cover. It is a soft cover and it's a paper cover. And so it'll get scuffed up pretty fast, which is the reason I keep it inside my Galen Leather A5 portfolio. My fourth frequently used notebook is one that gets tossed around in my bag, on my desk, generally by my kids, and gets manhandled. This is the Rhodia Composition Book. It's 160 pages of grid paper. It's soft cover with a really thick cardboard cover, and it runs fairly cheap. It's 10 Canadian dollars, and slightly less than US dollars there. What I love about the, the Composition Book is exactly that. It's composition. I personally use it for more of a detailed breakdown. So while I capture notes and ideas in my driver's notebook, this is the one where I'll flush out the details and I will have a game plan if I'm doing a video of all the details or all the things that I'm gonna say, so a rough script, more or less. But I also use it for studying my, my own passion projects and learning and sketching. If I'm picking up new skills, I'll take this composition book and just start taking notes in here. This one is my catch-all when it comes to deep dives, I guess is the best way to put it. While the Traveler's Notebook serves the brainstorming and the initial idea or the concept, this is the notebook where I'll flush out the concept into a bit more of a detailed understanding. and. Perhaps even just use it as a brainstorming or the first take at writing things down or writing speeches and what I might be considering with respect to certain buys, certain pros and cons lists, and categorizing as well all my random to-dos in the Travis Notebook into specific categories in here. And so this notebook sits on my desk, sits in my bag, and it's a great form factor as well. Super light, super small in that A5 size game. And I don't worry about get, getting this one wrecked. This one's just a free for all. There's no rhyme or structure to it. It just captures all the details, all the things I want to break down into further understandings, all of my specific studies or learnings uh, I'll capture in this. And I'll flip through this quite frequently just in terms of these are certain things of areas of interest and I'll keep coming back to it over and over. My last frequently used notebooks perhaps breaks my price and mobility guidelines for frequently used notebooks that I set out. And this is the five year diary by Midori. It is heavy. It has a cover which you can take off. Although I really like the cover. I do occasionally toss this in my bag from time to time, but it generally sits at my desk and I use it every single day, ironically enough, more or less. Sometimes I'll go a few days without using it or perhaps even at most a week. But the five year diary is is incredibly important to me, which I'll get into. The price, 76 Canadian dollars at the time of this video, a little bit cheaper in the US. I think it's 37 US dollars there. Considering that you're getting five years worth of space to fill out in one notebook, when you do the math, it actually kind of makes sense and is relatively price aggressive when it comes to a five-year notebook. Uh, just imagine 
buying a notebook every single year and filling it out for 365 days and doing that for five years, those notebooks will add up perhaps not to the same price, but generally uh, within that vicinity of what I paid for one of these. The reason I love the five-year diary, and I've done a video on this guy here as well, is because it gives me the opportunity to reflect and capture key moments on a daily basis within my life. And it's an amazing keepsake. I absolutely love this keepsake, the look, the feel. I just think it's wonderful. And someday my kids, and perhaps me, will take a look at the five years here and go, yeah, that was interesting what was going on in my life at that point in time. I've talked about in the video prior to how it doesn't have all that much space, which I really like actually. It helps me to make sure that I write down only the things that matter to me on a daily basis. Those are my five frequently used notebooks. And there's perhaps a bit of a theme there if you picked up on it. Effectively to-dos and high-level brainstorming, capturing notes and things like that rough plans and and again grocery lists and capturing notes and things like that just things to remember and from the high level aspects of my life i suppose in these two notebooks i then start moving into the reflective capacities uh, i suppose and breaking down details the midori a5 which i use for journaling is a little bit more of a deeper dive obviously into my mindset on a daily basis my intentions more reflection. The composition notebook here is taking any of the big ideas or any of the key area of interest in my traveler's notebook that I might have jotted down and really getting into the details here. Perhaps even using this as a capacity for reflecting on the details with respect to the original idea that I had in mind. And of course, the five-year diary, this culminates from the traveler's notebook planning and mapping out and jotting down ideas all the way into key reflections on a daily basis, key things that I want to remember. And so there's a bit of a method to my madness in terms of my selection of five frequently used notebooks and the workflow or the process or thought flow in terms of how I go from to-dos and ideas to reflections at the end of the day and using my five frequently used notebooks really as a understanding of my life a goal setting for my life, a moving forward of my life, and a reflection of my life as well. And that was my five. If you have frequently used notebooks, I'd love to hear about them in the comment section below. I'd love to hear what works for you and why you gravitated towards them. I think it's fascinating to hear about people's ideas and processes around their notebooks. While these are my five frequently used notebooks right now, this has taken me some time to get to these five, and I guarantee you I'll likely change it up when it no longer serves what I'm hoping for it. At the end of the day, these are tools, and I just want to reiterate the best notebook that you might have is one within your reach. Certainly, while these are my five frequently used notebooks, if for some reason I don't have those five in reach, I'll grab a piece of paper and I will write stuff down. I sometimes do that on my travels when I've forgotten to bring all my notebooks or I've intentionally forgotten to bring all my notebooks and I will literally just take the memo pad in a hotel and start jotting stuff down with their ballpoint pen there. I hope that was helpful in terms of your considerations for your stationary lives out there. If nothing else, I suppose it was a fascinating or perhaps not really fascinating insight into my process with my notebooks and how I use them. Before you go, if you like this video, please consider clicking on the like and subscribe buttons below. Take care, have a wonderful day, and bye for now.